So what's up? Some people didn't like the T60 promo video that I put out. Ah, you pulled the trigger too quick, I'm gonna tell you that. You pulled the trigger too quick. You didn't give it a chance, you just jumped the gun. Would I come out and tell people the wrong information or bad information? No. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do Dan style now. We're gonna run it right through like we were gonna do anyway. I guarantee you're gonna love this product and I'm gonna tell you why. You just gotta bear with me. We're gonna go through all the details. And if you don't like it already because you have preconceived notions, then just click off the video. Okay, so I think to truly understand this whole shelter, okay, why it was developed, you really need to understand where I'm coming from as an instructor, okay, teaching this to hundreds of students over the years. I've been doing this for over 10 years now, so I have a lot of experience seeing other students coming into school, talking to a ton of people, and also, being able to collect this data in my head and thinking, where's this need? Like, what do I see people lacking? So here's what I think. I think the best place to start is to just give a quick explanation. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you're gonna know my thought process behind this. And it's what we teach here at our school. And it's what I really truly feel is the most important thing for people to understand. And that starts with the survival priorities. Now we know those, you should know those, fire, water, shelter, and food, okay? Um, they are the things that we need as human beings in order to stay alive. Now, if you take your current situation, you're at home, you need those things. Of course, you're not gonna have a campfire at your house, but you're cooking food, you're warming up your water, you're turning up your heat because you're probably chilly under a nice cold cracker blanket. Point being, you need those things. In a wilderness environment, it is no different. So in a short-term type scenario, and I'm talking one hour to 72 hours, my main focus and what I tell individuals is most important is fire, water, and shelter. We let the food component out. Although that seems like what people want to jump to right away, most people just need to sustain themselves, keep themselves warm, keep themselves hydrated. Because if you put a good plan in place, everything else should fall in place and you should be out of there within a few hours if somebody realizes you're lost or injured or can't get out of the woods. Or maybe it's just an unexpected night. Okay, so with that said, it's really easy for most people, or at least as an instructor, to get most people to carry some type of fire starter with them. Now, that might be a Bic lighter, which I highly recommend, a pack of waterproof matches, maybe even a ferro rod if you have that level of training that you know how to use that thing. So that seems, that's like a no-brainer. Most people that hunt, that backpack, all carry something like that. Second is the water situation. I'm a big fan of boiling water, so I tell people all the time, carry a metal container. And that comes from my good friend Dave Canterbury, who preaches this all the time, carry a metal container. I say the same thing, carry a container because you can boil your water. You can get a dirty water source, you can boil it, disinfect the water, and you're good to go. So if you normally carry a Nalgene bottle or two Nalgene bottles, swap one of them out for something metal, like a stainless steel bottle, or if you're worried about weight, something titanium, and you have the option to boil water. So again, easy. Most people do that, there's no problem with it. So we have our fire, area covered, we have our water area covered, and then we get to shelter. Now shelter becomes the tricky one because most people understand that it's important to dress appropriately. Now, I say some people or most people because I have personally seen people come to classes, I have seen people on trails on days that they're dressed definitely inappropriate. And as the weather changes, they get cold and they have no way to take care of that. So my recommendation has always been to dress for the weather plus a little bit. So I'll give you an example. Right now it's like in the 40 degree range right here in Pennsylvania, this afternoon it was 50. If I would have dressed for 50 degree weather, okay, and I end up having to stay out all night for some unknown reason, okay, by the time midnight, one o'clock rolls around, two in the morning rolls around, it's probably gonna be in the low 30s, maybe even the high 20s, and that 50 degree clothing's not gonna work. So I wanna dress warmer. Now I took my coat off because it was warm, but I always can put that thing back on because I have it. But the part that most people miss is the shelter component that's gonna block you from precipitation. Yes, I get it, rain gear, I get that, but 
that's not going to do as well as a shelter. And I can say personally, and I know my instructors too, and we've had this conversation a thousand times, it is very difficult to get somebody to carry some type of shelter component with them to protect themselves from high winds, rain, snow, freezing rain, sleet, all of those different things. It's a hard sell to get somebody to carry that, especially a day hike. You're going and you're doing this loop. Fire starter, easy, water bottle, easy, shelter. Who's carrying that? Not too many people. And we have done it ourselves. When I go out and I'm just scouting around, I never carry a shelter component, or I haven't in the past because I don't want to. It's usually, they're too big, they're too bulky, they're a little bit heavier. So I'm like, I, I just, there's no reason. I'm not gonna set that thing up, I'll be fine. It was just that approach. And that approach is the same approach we've seen with students in and out over and over and over again. So with all that long-winded information out there, you're probably sick of hearing me talk, but we're, we're almost done with it. I, I promise, I promise. So with all that long-winded information out there, what we noticed was that when we did have students at a course, not only at my school, but other schools that I worked at, setting up a shelter was horrific. Everybody at home on their lounger or at their computer can set up a shelter in two minutes until they get in the field. And I've seen it over and over and over again, like I just said, it's been one downfall that we had to work on the most with students throughout the years. And I came to a couple realizations with this. Number one, so they're not carrying a shelter. Number two, the shelter they're carrying, if it is just a lean-to style shelter, they usually forget the knots or they're just doing something random to make it sort of work, or it's just way too big and they're sag and it's really not protecting them. They'd be better off just literally laying down on top of the tarp and rolling up like a taco inside of it and just calling it a night. So here at the school, we were striving for something fast, easy, effective, something that people are actually gonna carry with them. And that is where we came up with the T60 shelter system. Because at our basic survival course, you have to set your shelter up in under one minute. Under one minute. Because we're looking for efficiency and speed and something that's easy for people to do, that they can remember, they don't have to remember knots, they don't have to practice. Literally, my kid can set the shelter up. Now we get to break into this bad boy. All right, so we're gonna just run through like a normal video here, T60 shelter system. First thing you're gonna notice is that it's orange, okay? A lot of questions about that. We are marketing this right now as a survival type shelter. You don't want a camouflage shelter if there is an emergency and you want people to be able to see you. That's why we went with this color. Color options are endless. We are working and I have samples of different colors for down the road. But right now, emergency wise, something happens. We want people to be able to see you. Very, very important. Second, this thing is six ounces. Six ounces, okay? A big blue poly tarp is not six ounces. The house wrap that people are mentioning, I mean, uh, who is carrying that, okay? So six ounces, right now, this configuration, seven inches by five inches, it is maybe an inch and a quarter wide, okay? There's still room here. I could fold this in half, okay? So we're three and a half by five now. I can literally fold that in half again, okay? Almost in half. <laughs> You're getting my point. This fits in the palm of my hand, basically, okay? It is extremely packable, extremely lightweight, all right? So that's the first thing. This is going to give people the option to be able to carry this and not have to worry about this big blue tarp jammed inside their bag. Now, the next thing is what material this is made of. This is made of xenon material, which is not a generic cheapo fabric. It is a good, high quality, waterproof, water resistant, structured fabric, okay? There's no seams on this tarp, so you don't have to worry about seams leaking, okay? Um, again, it's lightweight because of that fabric. The fabric is extremely durable. Now, I know what you're probably saying. Well, how, how durable is it? I'm gonna show you how durable it is. So two years ago, we got a sample of this fabric. We hung it up in a tree and we let the wind blow it. We let the rain, the snow, we actually let it lay on the ground. We didn't make sure it stayed up in the air, okay? Two years ago. Now, this did start out as a darker blue color. Of course, it faded over that time. So I can say that. I can say that some trees and branches have fallen on top of this. But what I can also say is that it's still 
very strong. It's still waterproof. So when I do set this thing up, which I change the configuration from just laying on the ground sometimes to up in a tarp type configuration, it still blocks water from getting through. So although it has been out here, although some of the edges are beat up after two years of Pennsylvania weather, this thing is still holding back wind and it's still holding back water. So I would say overall that this is pretty durable stuff. Okay, now with all of that said, okay, we got a lightweight package. We got something that most people are not gonna carry along with them anyway. We're now making them carry along with them because it's like it's not even there to the point that it literally is just, it's in my pocket, okay? So simple and easy. Now, built-in bag so the bag cannot get lost, okay? Which I love that feature. The cool part that we like about this is it's the same thing that we teach at our school, except it's an all-in-one package. There's no needing to get your tarp and prep it this way, it's just put together. So the ends have sewn-in tie-out lines, okay? So two of the ends have the tie-out lines, and if I open this up further, the other two ends have our ribbon loops, okay? Now, the tie-out lines themselves, all right, are generously lengthed, so there's a lot of it. It is not bank line, it is reflected line, okay? So it ties up really nice, it breaks down really nice, it holds up really well, plus you have that reflective feature. So if it's stretched out at camp, you can definitely see that. Okay, so size-wise, we're looking at about five and a half foot deep. So from main ridge line back, five and a half foot deep, length seven foot if you're over seven foot sorry about that i'm six foot two i'm 220 pounds i fit under this thing just fine again what you're thinking about in this situation is a lean-to type configuration okay something that we can set up nice fast and easy put a fire out in front and keep ourselves comfortable for the evening all right now how this works is the same way that we teach our tarp setups you take one of the tie out lines the tie out line itself has the two strands on each side. What this is going to do is avoid you needing to know any other knots than your shoelace knot. If you can tie your shoe and you're not a Velcro guy, you can put this up on a tree. My kid literally can put this up on a tree and he's six. It's super easy. We're gonna take our first side and we're gonna pull it tight against the tree and tie the back end with a shoelace knot. We're then gonna go to the second tree and do the same thing. Okay, so at this point now, I can get under my shelter system and I am protected. Again, I'm a big guy. I still have room on my top and bottom. What you need to remember also that I have found and experienced personally is that you don't need a ton of reflective material inside, although it can help a little bit. If you have a fire out in front and you have a long fire on colder days and your tarp is positioned correctly, you're gonna get enough radiant heat inside, especially if you're dressed correctly during that emergency type situation. So the next thing I wanted to show was our loop system in the back. You could see here, I just broke a stick and I jammed it in the ground. Our loops are big enough to fit a nice size tent peg or stick, but because it is a ribbon loop, okay? It gets hung up and caught on the stick itself as long as the bark's on. And as you drive this down hard, part of the ribbon will catch onto the bark and drive down into the ground. So you don't need to carve tent pegs. You really don't need to carry tent pegs along with you. It's just gonna lighten up your load and make this thing something you're gonna wanna carry more often. So ribbon loops with your rear stick that you find laying right where you're at is gonna be a win-win. Okay, now pack up procedure. We have our built-in bag. What I like to do is right where the bag is attached, that one end has our strings. So I like to bury those strings at the bottom 
of the bag because that's the second set of strings that's going to be deployed for fast setup. So we just bury those things right to the bottom. All that you do with this is you literally just stuff it inside. I've had one of these prototypes that I got soaking wet and I left it out for days and days and days, pulled it out, and we had no mildew smell, no nothing on it. So um, you don't have to worry too much about that. If you're packing, unpacking a lot, um, it's gonna hold up just fine. So we take this thing, all the ropes in now, and then simply just stuff it in. So that big five and a half by seven foot footprint for a shelter like this um, really packs down nice, quick, and easy. So we're gonna just pack all that in, just literally jamming, jamming, jamming. And then what we're gonna end up with at the very end, the last thing that I like to stick in here is the other tie out. So what I do with this tie out is the same as the other. I just jam it down the back side of the bag, okay? Takes a couple seconds to get it in there, but it makes it very quick to deploy. So you can set this thing up in a hurry, no problem. Now what I like to do at the end before I flip the flap over, I just let the two ends of the line hang out and then I flip the flap over. That way, when I have to set this thing up, I know exactly what lines I need to pull. So I can literally pull this out, tie it to the tree, and then deploy the rest of the shelter. It makes it easy because then it doesn't get all tangled up inside of things. So that, my friends, is the T60 shelter system that we just released. And look, it fits right inside your pocket. So I guess to, to recap that overall, everything we went over, I know that was a lot of information, but I had a ton of questions about it. Um, this shelter itself, yes, lean-to type configuration. The, the highlight of this for me is the tie-out points are just there. It's easy, it's lightweight. It's super durable, which you've seen. We, we had a tarp out for two years in the weather. Still holds up really well. Um, again, packable and lightweight. Giving people the option to actually carry a shelter that's extremely usable into the field with them for emergencies, or because it's so durable, you can use this thing at camp all the time. You can set this up and camp with this, and you're not gonna hurt it. It's gonna be good to go. You pack it back up, and you'll be fine. Now, a few things um, when it comes to lean-tos and plow points, which this can be set up in a plow point can configuration. I just didn't have the chance to show it here. Um, you just drop the one side down. Um, those shelters for survival, okay, are the most conducive because of the fact you can put a fire out in the front. Tube, tube style shelters, um, the bivvies that you see out there that are the real thin mylar that you crawl in, okay, that stuff is working on your body temperature compared to having a fire. I preach having a fire, so this feeds into what I'm saying. If you're a bivy person or you want that A-frame because you feel like you're more protected from that, then this isn't probably the product for you. But if you're the lean-to, fire type person and you're looking for that lightweight shelter component to now be able to carry along with you, this is it, and we're super excited about it. So everybody that pre-ordered, thank you. Um, those orders, they will be processed and be sent out very, very soon. Um, I'm super excited about it. I hope everybody's excited about it too. And um, yeah, I think that would be it. That covered everything with our new product. I am, I'm man, this thing was in the works for like two years, um, just getting everything situated with it. It is made here in the United States, so um, that's another good thing. People asked about that, so it's not getting imported um, you know, on boats in thousand quantities. We're making these things here, and um, yeah, I think everybody's gonna love it once you get using it. So, as always, check us out at coldcrackerbushcraft.com, and if you don't trust our products and me at this point, I don't know what else to do with all of you. Come on, we're giving good information that we can, best information we can. I guess that's more appropriate, okay? Best information and the best products that we can put out there. Um, and we're not trying to rip people off. So I hope everybody gives this one a shot. And um, until the next video, stay in the woods. Now you have a shelter and you can pack this away. You're not carrying big things, it's great. But uh, yeah, all right, stay in the woods.